All right, so in this video, the goal is to try and estimate the distance between adjacent atoms in a gas. Um, so what I've done here is I've sketched a picture um, of a couple, of, let's call them argon atoms maybe, um, that are um, sort of randomly distributed. Um, and this is a fairly realistic picture. And what I'd like to know is what is the average distance between atoms? And, and of course, it represents just an average. Um, you can see that because it's a statistical distribution, some of them are fairly close. And you know, obviously, like this one, at least in this picture, it doesn't really have anything super close to it. Um, and so, um, this is really meant to be an average. Um, but it's an important um, sort of starting point for discussions about the kinetic theory or the our, our understanding of transport properties for gases. So what I'm going to do in order to turn this into like an easy to understand average is I'm going to make an abstraction um, or I'm going to make a simplified picture here. And that's I'm just going to pretend that I have the same number of atoms of gas, but I'm going to pretend that each one of them takes up one box within the same amount of volume. So I'm going to basically use the same amount of volume, but I'm going to put the same number of atoms in there, but I'm just going to space them basically one box apart. I'm going to say that one atom takes up one box, and each one of these boxes is approximately the same size, but in general the number density in these two pictures is meant to be the same. I don't know if that's actually true, so there are 12 here, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here, let me draw two more. 10, 11, 12 in this other picture. So these have the same number of atoms taking up approximately the same volume. Okay, so here's the trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that one atom occupies one of these volumes. So, um, so how much is that? That's, um, so the volume taken up by each box is 1 divided by the number density of atoms. Okay, number density, so let's double check that. So that's the number per volume. And so that means that that is the volume per atom. Um, so 1 divided by the number density is the volume per one atom. Right? Um, or in other words, the length between these things, if all of these boxes have the same dimension, um, is 1 over eta, oh wait, I shouldn't write it that way. Um, let me move this up a little bit. Or the length between adjacent cells would be 1 over eta to the 1 third, right? So that's the cubed root um, would give me the distance between each one of those boxes. And that's really the number that I'm after. This thing is the number that I'm after. Um, but I can use the ideal gas law to figure out what that number density is, right? So, um, so the ideal gas law, if I write it on a per atom basis instead of a per mole basis, so that would be P over N, P equals N divided by V times KBT. So um, the, in case this is totally unclear, um, so if you see this as an undergrad, you'll typically see the ideal gas law written as P equals or PV equals NRT, um, where the R is the universal gas constant. Um, universal gas constant is correct, so that would be 3.1, or sorry, 8.314, I think. Um, but that then that would be written in um, typically joules per mole Kelvin. Um, in this case, I'm interested in joules per molecule Kelvin, and so I'll use the Maxwell-Boltzmann um, constant. So that's this KB, which is uh, 1.38 e to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So that's what that's the energy. That's the characteristic energy per molecule per Kelvin. Um, so anyway, I'm going to write the ideal gas law in that way, and in that case, it's easy enough to see that the distance between atoms is basically KBT divided by p to the one-third. By the way, this is this is by definition the number of atoms per volume, which is the number density. Um, let me scooch some of this stuff down. Scooch it down to the one-third. Okay, so I said that I was going to calculate what that was for argon, so let me do that. Um, 
So for argon, what is the distance between atoms? I'll do that at um, one atmosphere, so that's 101 pascals pressure and 300 Kelvin. So if I do that at sort of standard conditions, what I'll get is 1.38 e to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin times 300 Kelvin divided by 101 e3 pascals take all that stuff to the one third minus one or to the to the one third and then that gives me 3.45 nanometers so actually in a gas at room temperature atoms are fairly closely spaced right so to put it in perspective like we were, what we remember is that uh, so for argon for example at standard conditions um, the, well, I guess it really doesn't matter. The size of an argon atom is about 0.35 nanometers, and the length between argon atoms at standard conditions is about 3.5 nanometers. So they're only spaced out about 10 times farther than their actual size. So they are not close to one another in the sense that it's 10 times as far, but, uh, you know, they're not so far away from each other in a, in a, in a, um, room temperature, atmospheric pressure, gas. All right, so um, the, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to cut this video, and the next thing I want to do is calculate how far an atom travels before it collides with another atom. So, so far we've figured out what the size of an atom is, and we know how close they are to one another, but we haven't really talked about how far they travel before they hit one another. Um, so uh, let's talk about that, because that turns out to be a very different number. Okay, let me cut this.